Friendship, Clean Living, for Thrills. Follow the adventures of Frank Farrell. Frank Farrell and his three companions, Helen, Jim, and Spud, were driving west to visit a typical western ranch. On the road, they discovered a car in the ditch and got out to investigate. At that moment, two bandits appear, and at the point of a pistol, take their car and drive away. Left with the bandits' deserted car and no gasoline, Frank and Jim start off in search of fuel. They knock at the door of a house nearby, but receive no reply. Cautiously, they open the door and enter. After a few moments, a peculiar noise, which seems to come from behind a closed door, attracts their attention. They are about to open the door when their flashlight goes dead. Frank has partly turned the knob, and just before the room is plunged into darkness, the door opens, and he discovers an old man in the closet, securely tied. As our present episode opens, the boys are in the dark room... And Frank is speaking. Listen. Jim. Oh, Jim, have you found a match? No, I haven't. Can't you get anything out of that flashlight? Oh, no, it's completely dead. Say, do you think the old man's badly hurt? I don't know. He's sure bound and gagged, though. Say, Frank, I wonder if the ones who did it are still hiding in one of these rooms. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and find out. What was that? It's in the next room. Maybe a cat or something. I hope so. Say, Frank, feel in the fellow's pockets. He may have some matches. That's a good idea. Find any? Did he have any? So much rope around his body, I can't get into his pockets. We better try and get him untied. Wait a minute. He may be a dangerous character himself. Let's try and find a light first so we can see what he looks like. This fellow belongs here, Jim. He's been robbed or something. I'm going to try and find the knot and untie him. I'll try to get this gag out of his mouth first. Yeah, here's the knot. Can I help you, Frank? No, I think not. Say, Jim... See if you can find what caused that noise in the next room. I'm getting the knot untied. I'll have it undone in just a minute or so. Yeah. Here it comes. Won't be long now. Oh. There. Oh, my throat. Uh, say, say, are you the same fellows that... No, no. Take it easy now. We're not the same fellows that tied you up, if that's what you mean. First, where do you keep your matches? If we can find a light, we can untie you. Why, you... You'll find some matches in the next room on the top of the stove at the back. Oh, yeah. They're in a little wooden bucket. Hey, Jim, see if you can find them, will you, while I tackle the rest of these knots. We heard a noise in there a few minutes ago. You think the men who tied you up are still in the house? No, no, they... They left by the front door. I heard them fire a shot on the porch, and then they ran down the steps. Just where is the stove in the next room? Well, it's in the far corner. Feel around until you find it, Jim. Hurry up. Okay. I wish there was a fire in the stove, then I could see some. Say, I... I wonder if Prince is all right. Who? Prince, my dog. He's a good watchdog, but he hasn't done any barking, and he hasn't even tried to get into the house since they left. Well, there's a dog on the porch, a big fellow. Perhaps the shot you heard when they left. Say, is that so? 
Well, now I know why they fired that gun. I thought they'd try to shoot back at me, but it was my dog they shot. Uh, my prince. Why, if I could catch those scoundrels, I'd even up with them, I tell you. I'd even up. Oh, there, there. Take it easy, I sir. Don't... Find any matches, Jim? No, not yet. There's something in this room, though. I'm sure there is. I don't know what, but I seem to hear something crawling on the floor. <laughs> Say, look, look, I stepped on something. Must be a cat, Jim. Yes, that's what it was. It, it was old Tom. Oh. Yes, it was him that knocked those pans down a while back. That fella out there, he must have stepped on old Tom's <laughs> tail. Yes, I guess he did. Say, so you don't have any electricity, do you? No, no, I just uh, use oil lamps here. There was one on the table in the center of the room, uh, but I guess it's been knocked over. Yes, it has. I noticed that when we first came in. I found them. I've got the matches. Good. Hurry up, Jim. He says there's a lamp on the floor. I've got one. I'll have some light for you in just a second. Well, now we'll have a little light on the subject. I'll have this rope untied in just a few seconds now. Here we are. This is more like it. Bring it here, Jim, so I can get a good look at these ropes. There, that's it. Now we'll have you fixed up in no time. Oh, say... Your head's been cut. What happened to you, anyway? Well, they didn't have as easy a time as they thought they would. Oh. I gave them a little fight. But, of course, I was no match for them. One of them hit me with that iron poker. Can you beat that? Hitting an old man. Oh, there you are. Now you're untied. Thank you. You'll feel better in a few minutes. Now, you take it easy for a while, and I'll get some water and clean out that cut on your head. Well, sir, you two young men are mighty obliging. Kind of restores faith in human beings again. Oh, we're mighty glad to help you. Give me a few of those matches, Jim. Why don't you take the light? Here, boys, just give me a hand now, and we'll all go into the other room. Uh, the water bucket's in there in the basin, and I, I can show you where the towels are. Oh, that'll be fine. Now, sir, well, up you go. Well, well, ah, that's it. Thank you. There you are. Now, you carry the lamp, Jim, and I'll help him into the other room. All right. Let me open that door for you. Here we go, mister. I'll have your head fixed up in no time, and then we'll do a little talking. Well, thank you. That's mighty nice of you, boys. Now, that'll do. Throw this water out, will you, Jim? Well, there you are, sir. You look better now. I'll say he does. I'll throw the water outside. Give me the basin. There you are. I'll finish getting the bandages on while you do that. Boy, that wind sure is howling. Yes, sir, that's a pretty bad storm, all right. We were having just this kind of a storm the night my wife passed away. Oh. It's been awful lonesome here ever since. That's why I wanted to get away from here. I didn't care exactly where, just so as I could get away somewhere. Oh, you'll be all right in a few days, and then you can be on your way. No, I guess not, boys. I'm going to have to stay right here now. You see, I'm broke. I did have $65 saved up. Tell you, youngsters, you don't know how I've skimped and saved to do that. Had $65 all ready to go. We're ready to go the next morning when these fellers come up here. Say, what did they look like? Well, I didn't get a very good look at them because the dust and dirt was blown like mischief when they came up to the door. Yes, yes. When they came inside, they said they had to have some gasoline. I didn't have but about five gallon in the old truck. Well, I I needed that myself to get started on my trip. Sure. So I told them I could just let them have about two gallon or so. That was plenty, though, to get them up the line to a filling station somewhere. That's who it was, Jim. Those same two fellas. And I'll bet anything they're the ones that robbed the banks today. Were they carrying anything, mister? Well, yes, they did have a sort of a satchel yeah. with them. And they seemed to take pretty good care of what little I saw. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I told them I could let them have only a part of the gas. Next thing I knew, they came right through the door and they grabbed me. Said they'd take care of how much gas I had. Next thing I knew, one of them grabbed me from behind and held my arms. And the other one started going through my pockets. Yeah. Well, sir, when that fella opened my pocketbook, I... I tore loose, and I made a grab for it. Mm -hmm. The littlest one pulled a gun, but I didn't care. I went after him just the same. They were taking the last cent I had in the world. Oh. 
Then the other one, he hit me with the iron poker, and, well, that was just about the last thing I, I knew for a while. Well, we had an experience with the same two men, and believe me, we're not through with them. If the police ever get them, they'll have plenty to answer for. They sure will. How are you feeling now, mister? Oh, well, say, what's your name? Uh, Beasley. Fred Beasley. Oh, everybody around these parts knows me. I've worked with this little farm here. I've been on it, oh, just any number of years. Well, Mr. Beasley, if you think that you're strong enough, suppose we get your truck and drive back to your car. If we can get some gas, we'll see what we can do about getting our stories to the proper authorities. These fellas haven't such a big head start that they can't be caught. And, Mr. Beasley, we'll do all we can to find those men. Then you'll have your chance to recover your money. All right, boys. You're certainly welcome to what gasoline I have. Do you feel able to go out with us, Mr. Beasley? Oh, yes, yes. I, I feel all right now, boys. Come on, the truck is out at the back. Come on, just follow me. Okay. Come on, boys. It's way down here at the back by the board. I'll show you. certainly is nice of you to do this for us, old-timer. Well, it seems like I should be the one to do the thanking. If it hadn't been for you boys, I'd still be locked up in that closet. How far is your car from here? I'm not certain. I don't think it's very much further, though. Do you, Jim? No, I don't. In fact, I think I see a light down the road from here. That may be it. Yeah, you're right. I see it, too. <laughs> Spud must have the lights of the car turned on. Good idea, Dad. I'll bet Spud and Helen are both scared stiff. I'll say that Spud is. Well, here we are. You can stop here, mister. Jim, you better run down and see if everything's all right. Okay. Call me when you need me. Mr. Beasley, I'll get the tow line off the racing car. Well, can I help you anything, young man? No, you just stay where you are, and I'll see what we can do about getting some of this gas into the racing car. Say, maybe it'd be a good idea if we back the truck up and try to pull that sedan out of the ditch. Do you think your truck has enough power to do it? Well, yes, I, I think it has. You boys can help uh, getting behind and doing a little pushing. Frank, Frank, come here, quick. What is it? What's happened? Come over here, quick, hurry. Be right with you. What is it, Jim? What's happened? Look, I found Spud lying here unconscious. Great Scott. Unconscious? But Helen, where's she? I don't know, Frank. She's gone. Gone? Jim, get some water quick. We'll bring Spud out of this and find out what's happened here. Mystery. Just what has happened here? Did the bandits return? Did Spud try to put up a fight? Frank and Jim will soon have him on his feet and will hear his story. In the meantime, don't miss one episode of the thrilling adventures of Frank Farrell. Frank Farrell. 